What is up, everyone? Welcome to the very first episode of Wayne's World. You might be thinking, isn't there another podcast called Wayne's World? And uh, no, there isn't. I looked. I was very surprised to see when I was looking up names for this podcast. I was very surprised to see that Wayne's World was not taken already. So I figured, hell, my name is Wayne. I'll take that name. That's super easy, super easy to remember. People remember the name. Uh, it's just sort of in the popular zeitgeist. So I just took it. Wayne's World is the podcast. This is the first episode, and we are going to talk about burnout. Um, this is kind of what this podcast is going to be based around. It's going to be based around just content creation, tips, tricks, life hacks, just finding little things to kind of help you uh, create content or to help you kind of um, bring your brand or bring your products or bring your website, anything that you do in terms of the internet, in terms of web, in terms of social media, just bringing it forward and turning it up a notch. So I have been, little backstory, I have been uh, creating content since 2014. And late 2014, early 2015 was when I started to do it more professionally. And when I mean professionally, I mean uh, making money doing that. That was my, that was how I paid the bills. That was how I kept the lights on. And um, since then, I've been able to uh, create a good living for myself. I've been able to grow the brand. I've been able to do stuff like this without having to worry too much about, uh, you know, pulling away content from the other brands. And it's been quite the journey because I never expected it to be this difficult. When you see people on YouTube, um, you know, we saw L. Mills talk about it, which is a very popular YouTuber. Uh, YouTuber Jap Se- Jack Septicai is another one. I mean, uh, Ethan Klein from H3, H3. There's a lot of YouTubers that go through something called burnout, and it's not specific to YouTubers. That's just kind of how it's been branded. Um, and I went through it myself in my own content, and I can I want to talk to you a little bit about it and uh, tell you how I sort of navigated myself out of it and how I now prevent it. I can see the signs when I start to get burnt out, and I put you know methods in place to make sure that the burnout doesn't become an actual thing because it is very very difficult. It was it was it's been a very very difficult journey especially for my one brand which is in the vaping sector, which is a niche sector, right? There's not much growth. There's it's it's pretty niche and um you know surviving through that surviving through that uh genre throughout the years and being able to afford you know, keeping the lights on has been very, very difficult, but also very rewarding in the same sense. But with with that, what comes with that is a lot of uh, burnout, a lot of doubt, a lot of worry, a lot of just sort of stressful situations. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do next. You don't know how to kind of take take that next step further. Um, And I realized throughout these years that it's really not that important. It, like none of that is really that important. What's what's most important is the content that you produce. So whenever you produce, whenever you put something out there into the world, the quality of that content is the most important thing. That's it's the most important thing. What happens with burnout and what usually leads to it is that people kind of get accustomed to thinking that their personality is their content and that just them being on camera is their content when that's not really the case normally people start watching other people is it's because of the type of the the type of content that they are pro- providing so when you fall into this trap of thinking that you know it's it's just you being on camera it's your personality it's just you making face that that is your content well you start to fall into the quantity over quality uh, sort of, you know, cyclical uh, spiral that that entails, you know, you start to think every single day, I need to put out a video, I need to put out, you know, a social media post, I need to put out an article. And to an extent, it does, and to an extent, it does matter. But what matters most and what matters, what matters solely is really the quality of that content and providing it and finding that a good balance between 
creating really good quality content, but also creating enough content to keep people engaged and to keep you know your lights on. Uh, that that's really the key there. And for myself, I found um, I, and for myself, I found that it, I found that out pretty early on in my uh, YouTubing career. You know, s- just speaking on Jack Jack Septica, who was the most notable um, YouTubers who went through this public burnout. He said he was doing two videos a day uh, for five years straight without taking any breaks every single day. And obviously that's going to lead to his success. Like he's massively successful. So that type of hard work will lead to success if you're dedicated, if you engage in the way that he engaged in. And, uh, you know, sort of luck things that kind of fall behind. A lot of it is luck, you know, determining the success of your of your brand or your channel. But that two videos a day is no joke. That's an extreme amount of work to put on yourself and to, to you know, constantly stick up with. And if you do that for five, six years, your, your quality is just gonna start to plummet. And that's where I guess he saw that, you know, I wasn't happy doing it. His viewers saw that he wasn't happy doing it, which thus kind of pulls that quality down a little bit. And it's just, you're not getting much reward for the amount of work that you're putting in. You, uh, you were, I mean, you've been talking a lot about being burned out and taking a break from your yeah, channel. Yeah, I was, I was just got really miserable doing the types of videos I was doing after a while. Mm-hmm. It's like a whole month where I was like, this is crap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm uploading shit just for the sake of uploading. And I was so stringent on my schedule and I was so <coughs> proud of that schedule. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to break that. Well, your fans, could they tell? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that was what made me do it because they they started being able to see it and I was like, well, if I'm not enjoying it, uh, and you're not enjoying it. What kind of comments would they yeah. say where you're like, oh shit, like maybe? Just that okay. I didn't seem happy. I don't have the energy I normally had. I looked right. sad. I looked mm-hmm. tired, which I fully agreed with. I was, yeah. and that's the biggest thing that I want to talk to you about. Like it's it's the the risk versus reward sort of thing. How much how much work are you putting? Are you getting rewarded? for the amount of work that you're putting in. And a lot of us, when we get into this daily schedule, this daily grind, and we start to get burnt out, it's because it's 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 not becoming rewarding. It's not rewarding enough, both both personally and financially. It's just not sort of clicking. It's not it's just not working. Uh so we have to change things up. So talking about it on my own on my own personal level, um, there was a point where in my, in my brand, I was just doing way too much and it was both, I was doing videos. I was trying to do a video a day and I didn't have a very strict schedule, right? My schedule was just whatever I decided my schedule to be. I always got in, I always was into this space because it allowed me to sort of be creative in the way that I wanted to be creative and, you know, allowing me to just do whatever I wanted. And luckily I've been fortunate enough to have an audience that accepts that and, and, and enjoys that. But I still try to stick to somewhat of a schedule and try to, you know, keep face. I try to keep relevant by posting a lot of content, a lot of videos. So I was doing that, but I was also maintaining a bunch of other things such as a website, which contained very detailed articles that weren't, that had nothing to do with the videos. Sometimes the videos would collab with the articles, but most of the time, I was doing a video on one subject, an article on another subject, uh, multiple different articles daily, right? I was keeping up with the news uh, in the genre. I was keeping up with the news and making sure that I knew about every single legislative bill that would come out in this space, in the vaping area, and I would have to write about that and make sure I was keeping up on that. Plus, I had to manage a Facebook. I had to manage an Instagram. I had to manage a Twitter account, um, and that was a lot. That, that is a lot, right? Uh, and on top of that, I was doing a podcast weekly. At one point, I was doing two podcasts weekly, right? So I was doing these like hour and a half podcasts late at night with a couple other people. And um, that was on top of everything else, on top of the website, on top of the articles. And while it was rewarding financially and it was rewarding personally, I I didn't really feel as if I was getting burnt out and I was just like, let's just keep going. Let's keep this momentum up. This is awesome. But, you know, after a couple of years of that um, and you start to see that you start to see that you're not quite you just don't have much else to talk about. You've already covered everything. If you're doing that much content, you've already covered everything multiple times over. So it was difficult to find inspiration and thus 
that quality that quantity over quality started to to happen and uh that's when i started getting burnt out because that's when i started to feel the reward start to slip away that reward started to diminish and it wasn't very rewarding personally for me uh, and financially because essentially that's when you know you get people that are like you know what i've already seen everything i'm out of here you know i've already read everything up i'm all good to go i'm out of here so it just starts to kind of trickle down a little bit and then that's when i felt the burnout start to kick in i started to feel like shit man i'm putting out a lot of work i'm doing i'm doing too much work i'm doing too much work and the reward isn't nearly as high as it was when i first started putting in this work so uh i'm going to need to take a break and figure some shit out i need to figure out exactly exactly how to manage this and figure out where to go from here to get to get to get back onto that balanced plane so i took a little bit of a break i think it was about a monthly break and uh, and and to me that break was just it was so needed. Like I just needed to just disconnect. Just the mere fact that I was constantly connected to the internet, uh, it just fucks your brain up. So I had to disconnect from the internet for a while and just kind of clear my head and, and and just you know you know what I mean. You know I just had to disconnect. Uh, and then I came back and then I felt as if I was falling into the same sort of pattern where I was just putting on these just just grand sort of expectations on myself because I thought that's what my viewers wanted and I thought that's what I wanted. I thought I was able to kind of handle that workload. I, I felt re-energized. I felt good. I felt like, uh, let's get back into this. Let's go. Let's get back on that grind, right? We always talk about getting on that grind. So I ended up just falling into the same thing. I ended up just falling into the same sort of routine where I was just doing way too much work for myself. And then it wasn't until last year where I just started to realize like, I just need to pull back. I don't need to be putting out a ton of this content. It's not, it's not rewarding in any of this, in any of the senses, right? It's not rewarding in any of those areas. Uh, and it's just putting an extra amount of workload on me. Let me pull back and focus my content on what people want, what I want to do. Um, and, and let's just, you know, kind of just hone things in and kind of tighten those screws a little bit and make sure that we can, uh, create the content that we first set out to create. And once I started doing that, I felt, I felt great. I felt great. I felt really, really good about it. I started to feel motivated again. I started to feel inspired again. Um, and that's just how it goes. Like you just really need to take a look at, the type of stuff that you're doing because this whole YouTube content creating space is pretty, it's fairly new. It's not, it's fairly new, right? Back in the day, like 10 years ago, if you wanted to do something like this, you needed a team. You needed people who filmed you, people who held the cameras, focus the cameras, make sure that the lighting is good on you, make sure that your sound is all good, right? Making sure that when you're done with that, the editing is, it's all edited really nicely. Then you have to send it over to a colorist who will go and color it correctly because when you're filming on a bunch of different cameras, sometimes the colors are off and the lights have different colors. So you had to go send that to a colorist and they, they colored that. Then they sent that final thing over to uh, an audio mastering uh, where they would master the audio to make it sound perfect. Then they would send that over to distribution where they would, you know, compress the file and make sure that the file was was good enough uh, for whatever medium it is, whether it's TV or it's internet or it's film, and then it's up, right? And then you had to manage all of the PR stuff with that, right? So you, so once that video is up, you had to go tell everyone about that video. Normally, you would do that with, uh, you know, go talk about it on a podcast. You do an interview about it. Uh, you would go, you do your social media posts about it. You know, make different little clips about it, little teaser videos, and that had its own little sort of, uh, you know, uh, chain of command where that teaser clip had to be sent over to someone to edit down and then colored and then audio mastered and then distributed. Uh, and you had to do that. And normally you would do maybe if you were a, a production facility, you could do one episode a week and they, it would air every Friday, right? And you would maybe air them a month or so in advance. So that way, uh, you know, you, that way you, you, you could keep up, keep up with it. And when you got into YouTube, it was just you. <laughs> it was you doing all of it. It's just you doing all of that work that would take hundreds of people to manage. It's just you. And we've gotten to a point on YouTube where there are teams of people who can do that for, for, for content creators. And those people normally have an insane upload schedule. They can do that, but upload daily, 
right? Like Jake Paul and, and Logan Paul and all those big time vloggers. They have a team. They just film it and they send that shit over to their team and their team disseminates it, they distributes it, it creates the social media, it does all that. So when you're someone who is up and coming and you see that, you see that upload schedule, uh, you think like, how the fuck am I supposed to keep up with that? How am I supposed to keep up with with something like that when it's just me? But you somehow do it. You somehow do it and you might do it for a couple years and then all of a sudden you feel like your, your fucking head's gonna explode. So it's finding that balance. It's finding that balance that is really important because you need to really hone in on what you wanna create, hone in on what your fans expect you to create and do that to the best of your ability. The, the quantity only matters to an extent. Don't upload one video a year unless that's what your audience expects. If your audience expects you to upload once a year because that's just what you do, then you can do that. There's probably not a good way to, to, to do it professionally when it's one video a year unless it's a movie that maybe they pay for or it's some, some sort of content that they pay for. Um, but for the most part, if you're relying on your own sort of merchandise, if you're relying on your own uh, maybe subscription like a Patreon or something or you're just relying on AdSense, you're really relying on just growing, constantly growing and getting more people in and connected to you. And uh, that takes a lot. That takes a lot, especially when you're trying to strike gold with something. Maybe that's viral if you're trying to do like a viral thing. Uh, it, it could take a lot of work. So for me, the burnout the burnout was uh, it was it was quickly seen and it, it was quickly dealt with. Um, and then I sort of fell into the same sort of pattern again and then dealt with it again. But I learned a few things along the way that also really, really helped me prevent burnout. The, the best thing ever, the best thing ever was getting an office, getting my own office that was out of the house. That was the best decision I've ever made. It was an expensive decision, but it was the best. It allowed me to separate my work from my life. And when you are constantly going at 100 miles an hour and you're doing it at your house, you can't escape work. You're just constantly checking your phone. You're constantly looking at your upload stuff, constantly trying to write new things, and you just never leave work. And that just continues to an acceleration of burnout. But once I got my office, I said, all right, I'm going to go to my office from this time to this time. That's when I work, and when I come home, I'm, I'm disconnecting. When I come home, not working, not working. Now, obviously... When you're your own, when you run your own stuff, you know that those lines kind of fade a little bit. Sometimes when I come home, I'll do a little bit of work. But there is a there. I've been pretty strict about making sure that when I come home, I'm not in work mode. I'm not in grind mode. You know, I might check an email or something. Uh, I might have to, you know, do have a meeting or something. But other than that, I am not creating content. I'm not going crazy. Uh, the podcast and stuff like this, I don't mind doing. It's 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 pretty easy to just sit up here in front of my camera and just talk for about an hour. Uh, that, that's not a problem, but when it, when it comes to really getting in the grind, I leave that for the office, and that was the best decision I made, and I don't remember exactly, I think it's been about two years since I had that place now, and it's it's contributed so much to my mental health. So if you are a con content creator and you're starting to bring in income, I highly, highly, highly suggest you look for some type of office space where you can create your videos in your own little private area where you have someone that gets your mail for you, where you, where, you know what I mean? Like it's just like a nice office setting that your brain can go, okay, it's work time. It's work time, and when it starts to get dark out, right, and it's time to leave, you turn the lights off, you walk out, your brain just goes, okay, it's it's home time. It's time to spend time with the wife, you know, play with the dog a little bit, watch a little TV, read a little book, play a little video game, go to bed, wake up, let's get back into the schedule. You know, the, when I wake up here, I wake up, I get my coffee, I read my emails, you know, I look a, uh, at a little bit of YouTube, and then it's work time, and then I go off to my office and do my thing, and then I leave. That was the best thing that I could have done. And I think that's what leads to a lot of burnout for YouTube content creators because a lot of them are doing it in their house. They're not getting these offices and they're doing it in their house. And like I said, it not having that clear distinction between work and play just fucks with you. It just really 
puts a burden on your mental health and you just can't get away from it. When you have a bad day at work, you're all you're home. You take that into your home and you can't escape that cycle. And uh, in the beginning, it's easy to manage. In the beginning, because it's it's new, it doesn't feel like work at all. Uh, you know, you're you're there's just a different mindset when you first get into content creating, but over time it does start to feel like a job. So you need to manage it like a job. You need to manage it like a job. Imagine if you Imagine if you were a, um, I don't know. Imagine if you were a uh, contractor or you were a roofer, right? I used to be a roofer. My father's a roofer. Imagine if you're a roofer uh, and every day you worked on your the roof of your house, right? At, f- at first, you wouldn't mind. You'd be like, nice. I could sit home. I could wake up whenever I want. I could go, you know, roll out of bed and get right to work. And it's fun for a little bit. But after a while, you just, you want to, blow your brains out. You cannot separate your, you can't separate your work life from your play life. And then it just drives you mad. It just drives you insane. And, uh, it causes that burnout. It causes an, ex- it, it causes an acceleration of that burnout. So I highly suggest if you are a content creator, if you can afford it, um, to, to, Look at getting yourself just a little bit of an office area and you can go check out like co-ops that, you know, they offer those rooms and those offices pretty cheaply, even if it's just a desk, even if it's just a co-op desk where you you can just go somewhere and do some work because it'll uh, contribute a lot to your mental health. Another thing that really, really helped me out was, um, and I'm finding this more now, but it was trying to stay healthy and trying to get good sleep. (laughs) So my sleep schedule last year for 2018 was at its worst. And it was mainly because I was planning a wedding. I was in the midst of just like changing a lot of stuff with my brand and doing a lot of other projects on the side. And I had a lot of other clients on the side and it was just a lot to deal with. So I kind of didn't have much time to myself until late at night, you know, from uh, around 11 p.m. to around 3 a.m. And I would stay up to 3 a.m. and then not fall asleep until around 3.30, 4 a.m. and then wake up at like 10 a.m. And that was just not acceptable. And now that I'm back onto like a normal sleep schedule, I'm starting to feel revitalized again. And you just get back into that work mode. You know, when when your hours start to blend, again, you're just not separating work from play. And it, it just kind of, it just doesn't become a very good thing. So eating healthy has always been important. Just maintaining good health is important. And finally, my, my sleep schedule is back on track, and I, and I haven't felt better, man. I, I felt that as good as I used to when I first started doing this, which is, which is rare. It's rare to have that feeling again. So, and, I, and, I, and it's just because of all these little methods that I'm, that I'm uh, putting into place here. Another thing that, that helped me with the burnout was figuring out ways to do a lot of the stuff that I needed to do in the most efficient way possible. So, uh, in terms of like shooting videos, I never shot videos before until I got into content creating, you know, I I didn't go to film school. I didn't learn how to use a camera. So when I first started making content, I started just, I was just putting in place just dumb workflows, right? Just like I would shoot a video, then I would have to upload it to this thing, and then I would have to import it, and then I would have to switch that over to a different codec, and then I could finally edit it down, and then I would switch it out to a different codec, use a different app to export it. And once I started to like learn these programs and learn how to create content and learn what audio design is, learn what video design color, learn what social media, you know, how to how to speed up your social media, uh, you know, learn all about the ins and outs of website design because I was also doing a website and I had never done that before. <laughs> I'd never done that before. So keeping up with a website that gets, you know, over 500,000, uh, you know, unique viewers a month it was a lot and i didn't realize how much i needed to how much i needed to learn to efficiently run it but like i said when i first started putting all this stuff into place i didn't know how to do any of it so i was putting in these just terrible workflow ideas that were just killing my time they were just really bloating my time and it was taking me forever to do anything and then when you were on a schedule that's daily and you have all these terrible workflows it just, it ends up just being a, this bloated mess. It's just everything, your entire work life feels bloated. 
So what I did was I said, okay, let me figure out the most efficient way to shoot this video. And then I did that, right? Then I figured, okay, I can set my camera up here. I'm not going to touch it. If they're on these settings. I'm not going to touch these things. I'm going to press record when it's time to shoot. Then it's time to go. And then I take that footage. I upload it to the computer. Then I bring it right into my, uh, my editing processor. And then I just do the editing as fast as I can. And I, now I have all sorts of little shortcuts that allow me to just edit in the fastest amount of time as possible. I created these LUTs. So basically these looks, uh, the, the way that the colors look in the camera, I created them uh, as presets. So once I was done with the footage, I just press a button and then that LUT is uploaded. That would, that would normally sometimes take an hour or two hours uh, to, to color that stuff, right? And then to upload, it goes up onto YouTube uh, and then I go and then I go push, put that stuff on my website. So I'll, I'll make a little article about the YouTube video that I just uploaded on the website and then I do that on social media as well. And then I figured out there are programs and, and just different ways where that they could do that for you automatically. So I set all that up. So once I shoot my video, Basically, it's just all automated. The only thing I need to do is shoot the video and edit it. And then once it's up, it's up. It just all goes to the places it needs to go. Uh, and it just slims my workflow down. So now I can shoot a video and I can spend more of the time researching the video, making sure that the video is good. I can spend more time making sure that uh, there, there's just that spark to the video. I'm no longer rushing through it to get it up in a certain amount of time because it's going to take me three hours to edit. It's going to take me two hours to write the article. It's going to take me an hour and a half to get all the social media posts up. Before you know, you have no time left in the day. That's why you stay up till three in the morning. That's why you know you you, you bring your work ho your work life over into your home and you're just constantly working because you're not slimming down your workflow. You're putting in all these bloated, uh, these this this inefficient sort of system into your life and it you know it just becomes that's just an experience really it's really just comes down to an experience so once you become more experienced with cameras and uh audio and all that other stuff social media web design css html all that stuff once you become more experienced with it you figure out little ways to do things do them correctly in the way that you know the big the big guys do them uh and then implement them into your life so so things are quick um so yeah, that those are the basically the main things that that really helped me sort of um, shake the burnout and prevent it, prevent the burnout from coming on. And being able to spot it is pretty easy. It's pretty easy being able to spot. I think it's pretty easy once you just start feeling like fuck. I'm out of ideas. I'm out of ideas. And that, as soon as you go, damn it, I don't have any ideas today. That's burnout. That's what burnout is. You're just burnt out. Your brain's not working correctly. Ideas are very easy to have. Everyone can have an idea. So once you're out of them, you're burnt out. You need to take a break. You need to look at your content. You need to make sure that you're consolidating your workflow and making sure that it's as efficient as possible. Just get back on track. Get back on track so you can get back to focusing on providing the content that you want to provide uh, because sometimes that, that gets lost. So <clears throat> it is a real thing. It's not just, it's not just a thing that's on for YouTube either. Uh, it, I'm, I'm mainly uh, dedicating this to content creators because YouTube is such a powerful platform. It really is just, just content in general, social media in general. It's so powerful. If you are someone who is creating a product and you know, you want to make a living and you're tired of working at your waitressing job or you're tired of working, uh, you know, at, at your retail job social media and YouTube is a way to really get you out of that. And it's a, it's a great platform and it's a rewarding platform, both financially and personally, like spiritually rewarding, feeling creative. Um, it is a lot of work though. And you need to be wary of just all of the pitfalls that come with it. But that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you out and navigate those. Um, and, and, and hopefully you can learn from the mistakes that, I, that I've made. And there's a lot of other uh, great YouTubers who will who have tutorials and tips and tricks and stuff like that that, sh that can help you along the way as well. Uh, my, my job here is to basically we're just chatting and I'm going to just try to help you out with some things that have helped me out. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I'm going to be real with you. There's a lot of bullshit out there. There's a lot of self-help bullshit that just does not work. It's a waste of your fucking time and money. And uh, it's all just kind of posturing, you know, and, and gaslighting. And I'm not about that. I'm telling you, 
what works, what doesn't work, how to how to navigate the bullshit. And that's what this is about. Wayne's World is about this. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, yeah, I'll catch y'all next week for the next episode. Peace.